On the build show today, we're talking post-tension slabs versus conventionally reinforced slabs, otherwise known as rebar. Today's build show all about foundations, specifically slab on grade. Let's get going. All right, guys, special treat. I got my engineer, Whit Smith from Smith Structural Engineering. Whit, I want to talk to you about the difference between a conventional slab on grade, a, you know, a reinforced rebar slab versus post-tension. And this is your design right here. So I'm guessing that you're probably relatively fond of what we've got here. Yes, our office, we design conventionally reinforced foundations. We don't do any post-tension with a few exceptions. There are times when we use them for sport courts, but for our, all of our custom single family homes, use conventionally reinforced foundations. Okay, so first let's explain what we're talking about here. This is a uh, a slab that you see underneath our feet, but this isn't a slab like your driveway or your, like your sidewalk. Uh, Witt's team has engineered uh, these beams that go through the slab in a crosshatch. So around the whole perimeter and then in a crosshatch section throughout the building, you've got these deep beams. And what do those beams do for us? Well, these are stiffening beams and, and as a reminder, this project was a partial existing foundation and a partial new foundation. We yep. added on to this existing. So this is our best example of a stiffened slab on grade. We yep. have these interior stiffening beams. Yep. And then we have a perimeter beam that they connect to. This beam is more of a strip footing. You could think of this more as a strip footing because okay. it's not connected to oh, anything. Oh, I got you. Yeah. So this is, this is just carrying an interior load bearing wall on that existing foundation because we didn't have a beam where we needed one. And it's spreading that load out, kind of like you see this big hole back here. Uh, those are point loads that are coming down onto the foundation. Now, when I think of foundations, I remember, I think your dad explained this to me years ago. This foundation is kind of like a, a big battleship on the water. You know, you think about a battleship that's getting rocked by the waves. The battleship doesn't break in half because that battleship is really stiff. And so if we've got pretty good soil on this particular location, but if we had bad soil, if we had expansive clay or other issues, we're designing that house to be a battleship. So if there's soil pressure or movement on one side of the house, the whole house is going to move as one stiffened slab. Does that, is that a good example? You like that? Yes, sir. And that's the theory behind it. Okay. So then now let's compare that to a slab that is a post-tension slab. Can you kind of give us the overall uh, understanding of what the post-tensioning slab looks like? Well, it's a, it's actually a very similar concept. So it's still also a stiffened slab on grade. It's just that instead of conventional rebar, they use post-tension cables. Okay. So you, if you drive by and you see a foundation shortly before it's poured, you're going to see either a mat of steel mm -hmm. in the slab, or you're going to see cables at about four feet on center. Yep. You'll still see the grade beams and you'll see oftentimes a cable top and bottom, maybe more, but you'll see cables in those beams. And then you'll see them terminated in the edge of the foundation on two sides, typically, if it's yeah. a square or rectangular foundation. Now, the, the theory is still the same. It's still designed to be rigid enough so that if there is any soil movement, uh, this foundation is stiff enough to handle that movement. Yep. But otherwise, uh, it's just a different uh, reinforcing system. So explain what they mean by post-tensioning. What does that mean? The way those foundations work is they, they install all the cables. You'll see them draped between their supports mm -hmm. called chairs. You'll see the chairs in place. The, the cables will be draped over them in place. They're going to come in and pour the concrete. Once the concrete cures, they will come in and stretch those tendons. They will, they will come on one end, one end it's anchored. The other end, they put a hydraulic jack on it and actually stress the tendon. And that pulls the foundation together. It puts it all in tension and that's what gives it, gives it its strength. Got it. So it's, it's compressing that foundation. And I always think about the big benefit of those foundations being you have less concrete cracking, less stress cracks, uh, because that concrete is, is physically being pushed together all the time. Now, one downside of those that, I, that I'm always cautious about, and I always think about remodelability, is I'm worried if I'm going to someday remodel that house, or maybe let's say I have a problem in construction, I need to jackhammer, if I were to hit one of those cables by accident, what would happen? Well, it would pop and <laughs> it, it, it would, you would release the tension, you would hear it, everybody on the job site would know that you've cut one. Yeah, and we can actually, there's actually been accidents where people have gotten hurt with those too, right? I believe so. Yeah, and then also if that pops, now I've got cables, let's say if they were four foot center, I've got a big four foot section missing. So now my slab may not work as the engineer originally designed, right? Yeah. And there are actually methods to come in and they can re-thread a tendon. Oh, really? So, so okay. if, you, if you accidentally cut one or if one, if you lose one due to corrosion or whatever the case may be, they can come in 
and they can splice them or they can thread new ones back in their place. Okay. So as far as the remodel goes, you can still remodel. You have to have use much more care when mm -hmm. cutting slab and removing yep. sections of it. And if depending on the size and the location of where you're removing the slab, you might actually have to come in and be, take the stress off those tendons prior to doing any of the initial demo. Oh, interesting. I've never heard of that. Yeah, they Fascinating. Can, they can take the tension off of them and then come back and retension it later. Okay, interesting. So Whit, I've always gravitated towards this type of slab because I felt like it was a better product. It was a more long lasting, less problems in the long run type of foundation. And when I think of a foundation, you know, this is a this is the foot, the shoe for your house that needs to last for generations to come. This is not a place that I want to skimp on money. What do you think about the difference between the two? Well, we prefer these. There's a lot of reasons. We we generally believe they perform well. As you said, there is good crack control in a post-tension foundation. Uh, there's no denying that. A conventionally reinforced foundation also does a very good job controlling cracks, maybe yeah. not as good as post-tension. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of other benefits that we like to it. One, as you mentioned, remodelability. Mm -hmm. The other, though, is uh, post-tension works very well on regularly shaped foundations, ah, rectangular, right, square, right. generally flat. Mm -hmm. If you get into a more custom situation where you don't have a regular footprint or you have grade changes throughout the house, it's, it's rebar is the way to go there. Yeah, that makes sense. I hadn't thought about that. So if you've got cut up sections, you've got different angles happening, it can be really hard to design that with post-tension cables. Yeah. Right. In general though, we do see that post-tension slabs are less costly to build. Uh, and so you tend to see production builders using post-tension uh, all throughout Texas. Yeah, that's right, they're very popular. Uh, however, we're not dogging them, we're not saying you get a bad foundation if you have a post-tension. I just think that this style of foundation, especially in a custom home where you've got other things going on, irregular shapes, remodelability, this is definitely my choice. Whit, thanks for coming out on the job for yes, me. Yes, sir. Appreciate Always it. Always a pleasure. Guys, if you want to see more on this job, we actually are probably moved on by the time this video posts some construction and we're into the framing stage. We're doing this house a little differently. We're using a ready frame pre-cut framing package from our friends at Builders First Source, and this is going to be a fabulous series of videos. We're calling this the Reisinger build. I'll put a playlist link below. Go catch up on this Reisinger build project. Super fun to have my engineer on the job. We've got one or two things we're correcting today to get ready to pour next week. So stay tuned for more from the Reisinger build. If you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.